Uh, good evening, coaches. Uh, you're all very welcome to uh, the under-16, under-17 tourist uh, football coach webinar this evening. Um, it's the last one in our, our uh, webinar series for March, and please God, we'll be back out in the fields very soon. Um, my name is Paul Garrigan. Garrigan. I'm a GDA in Wicklow, and I'll be co-presenting the presentation tonight with my colleague, uh, Cormac Noon, who's also a GDA for West Wicklow. Um, as I said, tonight we're going to be covering the um, under-16 and under-17 player uh, Taurus, Taurus uh, initiative um, designed by Leinster GEA. Um, if, as we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, um, just use the, use the chat function and we will, we will comically pass the questions over and we'll do our best to answer them. So without further ado, we'll just uh, go into the into the presentation there, Cormac. You want to move on the slide, please? Um, Torres, as I said, he is a Lenser initiative um, designed to support a coach's uh, coach's journey. So it's it's a program designed by Lenster to support the player and the coach's journey along the pathway. So the webinar tonight, um, we're going to demonstrate the Torres coaching principles and practice. So. What we're going to look at tonight is we're going to look at the Torres coaching principles in practice, basically on the pitch. So how you apply them to your coaching training sessions. OK, we're also going to just show you the uh, the player pathway coaching resource that that coaching resource will be um, will be emailed out to um, all of the coaches after the presentation, uh, in addition to the other resources that we have at the end of the presentation. So. And you can use the chat box for this, but what I'd like you to, to focus on for, I suppose, in the next couple of minutes, okay, is, is what you coach, okay? So when you think of the under-16, um, under-17 player, what do you coach, okay? So what, um, what activities and what areas do you coach to your players, okay? So I'll give you about 10 seconds there just to think, of that, think about that. So our, the, the, the presentation now is going to really focus on, on the what and the how. Now, you know, in recent years, the what has been, you know, is probably a little bit easier as regards with the amount of resources out there. But the how probably, you know, is the most difficult one to um, to deliver. And, you know, it's probably the most powerful one as well. But you need both. OK, so, you know, just focus there for the, the focus on what to uh, what you coach in your sessions. OK, so some of the answers that you're probably thinking are skills. OK, so what? You know the skills that we would uh, we would use with our with under 16 to under 17 players like tackling and kicking and all that kind of, all the, all them kind of technical activities. Then we look at team play activities. Okay, the likes of our condition games. Okay, so how we condition condition our games or our pass and move, not taking the ball into the tackle, all that kind of stuff. Decision making. Okay, so when to make practice and activities to make when we make the right decisions, when to pass it, when to kick it, when not to pass it. When to carry, when uh, when to shoot, uh, when not to shoot. Okay, all them kind of kind of um, options. Okay, the likes of discipline as well. Okay, you know, uh, defending and attacking. Uh, so that the principles of defence and the principles of attack um, in relation to your t uh, in, in, to your tactical activities. So you're working on your, you know, if you're working on your defence, you're working on your, you know, how compact you are and. Um, likes of attack and how wide you are and keeping your depth, the likes of movement, okay, so our movement on the ball, our movement off the ball, um, speed, so in relation to uh, speed activities, so we would have had a workshop there last Friday that focused on speed, so like speed should be nearly in, 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 in every session that we do that we are working on our player speed, so and then our fitness, so whether that's aerobic fitness or anaerobic fitness. Um, that needs to be covered in your session as well, and then obviously good communication. That you know that there's good communication within 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 your uh, the activities that the player the players are doing. Okay, so the next one, as I said, and I suppose this this is this is a really really important one because you know as I said you, we can get all the activities now, and there's loads and loads of activities on 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 the um, on in the internet and social media and stuff like that. But I suppose this is really the big one, okay? And you know, we have to be really, really effective in how we coach these activities um, to to our player, to our players, and how we adapt uh, the activities for our players. Because if you just have the what, you know, you're just basically running a session that you that that you picked up off the internet or you picked up in a in a coaching book, and that's fine. But it's not going to have the effect that you want as regards to get your players better. 
so some of the answers there in relation to, to on the on the how to coach. So you know, I spoke about varying your activities. Okay, so how you vary your drills. You know, like you know, if you're if, like just for example, if you're trying to do it, you know, improve your kicking, just increase the distance. If you bring bring movement into your into your drills, you kick and move. The likes of your games, okay, as regards condition the games. So so what conditions do you have to put on your games? you know, based on the needs of your players to improve them. And then the likes of set plays as well. So, you know, how you how you vary them, how you adapt them. Um, effective communication, huge. OK, so obviously, if, you, if you're going to be focusing on the how, you're going to be really, really focusing on on your communication. So how many of us as coaches, you know, um, communicate to our players before um, before a session? OK, in relation to this is what we're going to cover in the training session tonight. So these are the objectives and these are the aims and these are the goals of the session tonight and why we're doing them. OK, so that's really, really important as regards that um, the likes of then during. OK, so how do we how how do, how do we um, how do we uh, get our message across dur during the training session? OK, so are we given are we giving our players um, the right information? And are we giving them the right tools then to, or the, the, the right feedback, I suppose, to, 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 you know, to make them better or for them to understand what, what the message that you're getting across? And then again, the likes of after a training session, do we, do we review our training session of what went well in the training session? You know, what we're going to bring into our game at the weekend, you know, and, and you know, what did we take from the session tonight? You know that the players are going back saying, "Listen, we did this up at training, and um, you know, and, and 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 you know, we we have an understanding of it to bring into the match of the weekend." You know, and all that stuff is really really important, and it's important as well when you're communicating that you you have your timelines, uh, you know, in relation to that. That you're not talk like you know when I talk when I talk about effective communication there that it's it's to the point, okay, that you're not talking like before training for 15 minutes. Next minute you look at. Look at your watch and there's 15 minutes of your training session gone and the same during okay it has to be precise feedback okay quick snappy feedback you know and then back into the game and the same at the end okay you don't want players hanging around for 20 to 20 minutes listen listen to the the whole session okay hit the key points and you know something i find really good when i when you know when i'm planning a session i always kind of put in the communication points beside all my activities okay so you can nearly you know, uh, script what you're going to be going to be saying because you you'll have a fair idea of the issues that's going to come up during the during the training session, okay? And you can you can have your little key point point um, point sentences and stuff like that, and um, you know to ask the players and give them get, uh, give them feedback um, on that. Sorry, Carmen, just go back to the room, please, there for a sec. And then just the last one, then um, just the coaching tools, okay? So you know the the use of tactics boards is really really good. Uh, you know, you know, you bring out the tactic board. You know, especially if you're working with uh, working on tactics and stuff like that. Bring out your tactical board at the um, at the at the start of a session and go through briefly what you want as regards uh, to do in relation to tactics. And then obviously the likes of video analysis. Again, iPads are really handy. Obviously, all your phones now, you know, have access to to clips and videos and stuff like that. So if you do a video match, you know, or a, or a training session or something, it's it's very easy to. Show a player as regards, you know, what what he has done well, or you know, what he needs to improve on. Okay, so all them areas there in relation to varying your activities, effective communication before, during, and after, and using coaching tools, and um, you know, to to improve your sessions are vital. Okay, and you'll see during that during that during the um, videos that Cormac will go through later on, the what and the how. Okay, so you'll see the activity, but I'd I'd ask you also to look at the coaches. And how they're communicating and what they're using in relation to communicate and getting their message across. Okay, so the total playing performance, okay, is that you know this is called the T TPP model, okay, for short, okay. And this basically, when when you're putting your training sessions together or designing your tra training sessions, in my opinion, your training sessions should should all should cover all these points, okay. So you've got the three T's and the three P's, okay. So all and, and, and we show and we show you the um we'll show you the card down in a few minutes okay but basically when I'm planning a session okay as a coach I'm trying to involve or trying to have all these in my coaching session okay so you know and especially for minor players um at that age it's important that you tick all these boxes in relation to when you do a training session so 
technical proficiency. Okay, so that's a what. Okay, so you know that's when we talk about as regards the technical um, the te technical ability of a player, and you know, it's, and it's a really important one. And sometimes we don't we don't spend you know a lot of time in it. And you know, I was talking to a guy the other day that does you know stats for a for a Division One senior senior lads team, a count inter county team, and. You know, we were just talking about performance analysis and stats like that. And he said, Paul, a lot of the times, you know, when we go through matches, it'll come back to nearly one thing and it'll come back to as regards the skills of the players. OK, so, you know, if we look at something and in, in relation to recording and we do, stats and uh, we do stats analysis on the game, a lot of a lot of the problems will come back to the, the players not being able to perform the skills under pressure. OK, so, you know. Uh, you know, if you review a match or you're watching a train session, there's a breakdown of the skills in your game. You you need to, you need to work on that um, with your players. You know, so whether that's adding some technical um, technical activities in the warm up or adding a little bit in, you know, uh, you know, you see the likes of Mick Bowen there doing a lot of complex activities, you know, in the warm ups with Dublin ladies and previous to that with Clare footballers and stuff like that. You know, two balls activities, getting loads of touches in the warm up and stuff like that. Uh, hand passing with two balls, kick passing with two balls, left and right. Okay, so that's that's a really really important one. Technical proficiency, tactical pro uh, prowess. So that's that's the that's the what again. Okay, as regards to your decision making. So you know, putting your players into into decisions. You know, um, like they're going to be in matches. So the likes of a two v one, maybe two forwards coming in on one to try and score a goal with with a goalkeeper there. The likes of you know really putting them into the, in, in like a three v two or a five v four. Uh, putting them into decisions on uh, or into activities that's that's going to improve their decision making. Uh, your team play again, the likes of your you know that kind of links into your tactical stuff. Okay, so you're obviously working on that. And again, that's that's one where I'd be you know going out to sessions and a lot of coaches don't spend enough time practicing what they, what way they want to play. And you know a lot of it is probably because it's a really really difficult one and you need you need a lot of assistance as well. When you're doing stuff like that, but if you if you want to play a particular way, you need to practice that in your training sessions. You need to practice that in your training sessions. Um, you know, you, you can't be just turning up to a match and expecting players to know what they're, what they're going to do. So put them into the situations. If you're playing with 12 behind the ball when you've lost it, you know, you need to practice that at training. OK, and you need to be you need to be interacting with the players uh, in relation to what you're trying to do. Uh, physical fitness. So we spoke about that. So in relation to aerobic and anaerobic uh, fitness, that's, again, that's another what. So there should be an element of that in your training, okay? Now, that could be in the condition games, you know, although we had a debate the other night whether, you know, condition games will foot, will get your team fully fit, you know, and, you know, I suppose coming back from Dan Moore that night, he said, no, you you, you probably have to, um, you know, kind of layer your training session, or, you know, or kind of mix it in relation to, um, physical fitness. So you do need them, you know, running without the ball and then maybe having an activity at the end of the run and that kind of thing. Um, so the likes of physical fitness is really, really important so um, that you incorporate that into your training session. So the likes of your Gaelic 15, maybe a little bit of speed work or aerobic work and then we go into our ball work and then we maybe finish off with a little bit of aerobic work at the end. And the last two then are the how that I spoke about, um, you know, previous to that. So that's your participant feedback. So, you know, how are you, get, so are you running the session and are you, are you asking your players questions during the training session, okay? Or are you just running the training session? You know, previous when I probably started coaching a couple of years ago, I was probably just running training sessions. I wasn't asking the players, okay? So you need to be checking for understanding. You need to be getting their feedback. See, are they understanding what you want them to do, okay? And, you know, and if you can get, if you, if they, if you can get, them doing what you want to do through through the likes of that, um, you know, you're you're really really um, you know, nearly there as regards, you know, getting getting um, getting the team to play the one the way you want them to play, and then obviously the psycho psychological focus. Okay, so really getting your players players uh, focused, uh, you know, and you know mentally strong and challenging them within the within the training session. Um, but as I said, all of your sessions, you know, should be containing these. Okay, so when you're putting your training session together. Ask yourself, are, are you covering technical? Are you covering tactical? Are you covering team play? Is there a phys physical fitness element in it? What questions am I going to be asking through the, through, the, um, through the training session? And are the players challenged? Okay. So this is the card, and Cormac will email this out to participants um, later or, or, or in the morning. So, you know, you have your wheel there. So this is the total playing performance model. 
Um, so you can have your technical skills like handling, movement, uh, the likes of tackling. Uh, you have your physical fitness there, so your physic, uh, your flexibility, your, which would be in your Gaelic 15, your speed work, your strength work, okay. Um, you have your tactical prowess, your decision making, trial and error, observation and feedback. And then you've got your team play, okay. So your, you know, poor players are challenged to adapt a number of team playing styles throughout the season, okay. The two yellow ones then are the how, the psychological focus. So, you know, um, players can fully recognize the improvements made through, through individual practice. Uh, and then the likes of participant feedback. So question players, in, uh, coaches question, uh, coach, coach questions players individually and decisions made on and off the ball. And then maybe, you know, like highlighting the examples of good play of what we're doing well. And then, you know, stuff that we need, need to improve on. Okay. So that wheel is basically, you know, uh, covers all the areas as, as regards the TPP model. On the outside of that, you've just basically, you've got the coach, the environment, the player and the game, okay? So that just gives you, as regards the coach, what the coach should be doing in relation to the to the training session. The environment then basically is, you know, like, as regards what, like, you shouldn't be up on the pitch there on your own with 20, 23 or four players, okay? So your coach ratio is one to 10, you know, uh, at least one ball for every two players. So the environment, so your training environment, then obviously the game, okay, so what type of games you're, you're playing, obviously you'd be playing full side of games in your matches, okay, but you know, the likes of the condition games and stuff like that in training, and then the player, okay, which is important, so what, what type of player that you're dealing with, okay, so you know, obviously the, the, the minor player is, is nearly at adult level, and then you'll also have, you know, 16 year olds as well, so you know, like the player here, a strong connection with, 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 with club, ability to mix uh, socially with all, um, personally responsible for hydration and nutrition, uh, manage rest and recovery. So you know, the, you know, this player is probably playing an awful lot of sports. Okay, so you know, managing time effectively between school and sport and rest and recovery is huge. So you, as a coach, have to take that into account. Okay, if you don't take that into account, you're, the player is just going to be uh, burnt out. Okay, as regards um, just doing too much activity. Okay, so that that we that, that TPP model is very, is very very good. And it, it, as I said to you, it, cover, it covers the technical, tactical, physical, uh, team play and psychological elements. So as I said to you, just before we go into the videos, the Taurus principles, uh, you know, focus on the how to coach, okay, um, and the what to coach, okay. So, and all your sessions really should, should be made up like this, okay. So the videos that you're going to see in a couple, couple of minutes um, are, go are going to follow the Taurus principles, okay. So... When we're looking at the videos in the next couple of minutes, okay, ask yourself: Did the coach test the players? Okay, did he cho did he cho did he choose activities that challenged all the players? So were all the players challenged within the activity? So when you when you're running whatever activity, whether it's a warm up or a four v four or a three v three or a one v one, there must be a, there must be um, th that activity must challenge the players, and there must be an adaption to it. Okay. The next one then is upskill. So understand that each player has individual needs, okay? And that probably goes up up from nursery when they start right up to minor, that each player has an individual need, okay? So there's different different levels of ability, okay? So you need to you need to be aware of that and you need to challenge the player um at each of his each of his level, uh, each of their levels. Uh, relevant, okay, so you know, make sure that the activities that you're doing resemble the game. OK, so if you're doing doing activities that, you know, um, or, or skills or whatever that you want to work on, make sure that they that they resemble the games, that the, the, what you want to play. Uh, all inclusive. So all your players should be involved all the time. OK, so with the players, we shouldn't have players, you know, sitting out and um, every player should be involved up there. You're trying to get as much ball contacts um, as possible for your player. So everyone's involved all the time. And then the last one, then stimulating. So enjoyable, uh, developmental, appropriate, and holistic GEA experience. Okay, so you need to stimulate the players. The players need to find the sessions um, enjoyable. They need to be appropriate in relation to their development. And you know, if I, I think if you have got the two of them, um, sorry, and, and the three with with stimulating them, and um, you know, it becomes you know a, a good experience. You know, and you and the players will enjoy enjoy your sessions. Okay, so. Um, before I pass you over, Carmen, so if you look at the videos on these, okay, um, you need to focus on the coach as regards, you know, uh, how he's how he's uh, using the Torres principles and obviously the what as regards the activities he's, he's doing. 
Okay, so uh, thanks, Paul. Um, so now we're basically going to look at some videos where you're going to observe different coaches with, I suppose, different kind of styles apply some or all of the, the tourist principles to different activities, all game-based activities. So the first one here is the Gaelic 15, okay, which is basically just uh, an injury prevention warm-up. But um, it's, uh, I suppose, the Keane O'Neill is in charge here. He's the former Clare manager and, and Kerry coach. And I just wanted to kind of have a look at it and see, try and spot some of the, the tourist principles and how they're being applied, okay? So... Um, I'm going to play the video now. It's, it's going to skip the early pass parts of the, of the video. So basically, he ramps it up like like most um, warm ups. The whole point of warm up is to ramp it up to get up till you get up to get a match match situation or match speed. So this is going to skip a little bit, but um, you know, you just just observe particularly the sound. Okay. Did attack the ball. Come out of it. Attack it. Come out of it at speed. Excellent. Excellent. Low feet on the floor. Tote the ball if we need it. When you pick up, sprint for three, change direction. Passing and moving. Passing and moving. Let's do it. Attack the ball. Attack it. Good, good, good. That's good. I really want you to work on your kicking. That's a great ball. Well done. Well done. Nice. A to B, pop to C. A to B, pop to C. That's it. We're constantly moving. A to B, tumble. Pop to C. Let's go. Get the timing of the support right. Get ready for it. Catching high above the air, exploding into it. High feed. Attacking the ball. Let's jog it in, boys. Good job. Okay, so um, again, look, if, if that didn't play, it was choppy for anybody. Um, we This will be all added at the end. But just a few parts of that um, warm-up. I suppose the most important thing probably and the most obvious thing is the tone, okay? So he's so clear and concise and I suppose... You know, it, it, it gives it gives me the impression that there'll be no slacking in that session, okay? Um also I actually skipped it, but there's a very interesting part earlier on in it where he's asking the players to bound, okay? So that's putting one knee up and one arm up in the air. And uh, immediately the next activity is a high catch. So they're all directly linked, okay? So uh, you know, we're not saying that this is the exact warm up to do but definitely elements of this are really important and can be used going forward okay so we're just going to look now um at some of the part the how the tourists uh other tourists um the tourists sorry i'm just going to move forward here the tourist principles are applied okay so it's testing in the form that uh, challenges every player to move and perform a pace, okay? So, again, you, you heard him when he said pick up the ball, sprint three steps or sprint four steps, okay? So you're getting up to match pace, okay? So upskill, how does that upskill the players? I suppose what I, when I alluded to the tone of Keane O'Neill there, he praises good execution, okay? So that's a, you know, a player is going to uh, feel... Um, I suppose happy about that if he if he feels doing something well and he knows maybe I'll apply this technique the next time because it worked well for me here. Okay, so it's relevant in form that it refers to match tempo. All inclusive. There's multiple ball contact, so you probably, at one stage I think every player has a ball and then they kind of go between one, a ball between two, and then finally a ball between three for more game specific movements. Um, again, there was probably a movement there that no one uh, you might have noticed where he gets the ball, a player to gather the ball and roll, and then a player to time a run off his shoulder and ha receive a hand pass. That's something that I, I noticed a long time ago in, in a warm up. I think Cork were doing it in 2010, and it's something that I brought to my warm ups as well. It's something that we find ourselves on the ground an awful lot in games, surrounded by players, and we just throw the ball out aimlessly. So it's a good skill to work on as well. Finally, stimulating. So there's a variety of activities, all pretty much game-based, and there's a really positive, energetic tone about that session. Okay? So we're just going to move on now to the next one. So 
This is the keeper restart game, okay? Uh, so this is from Colin Nally. And I suppose the game is kind of made up of uh, four or five, several different training or ki- several different kicking sta- stations where which surround a playing, z- a playing zone. So basically there's two teams in the centre of the playing zone. And um, one keeper is with each team, okay? So he must find a teammate and move on to another station quickly, okay, before his turn comes around again. Uh, so I suppose some of the really important uh, elements is just the player in the middle, you'll notice they have to shake off their marker to try and receive the ball, okay, which is difficult enough. Um, and obviously, so the, the other player is shadowing. And finally, uh, just watch out for the principles here and how they're applied. Has everyone got a, has everyone got a man? Right, listen, the good looking Aaron is with the oranges. The other orange is with the, the kicking from the blues, he's with the colours. Right, so. Yeah, now, lads, you can go anywhere, but you're not allowed to kick two balls from there. Do you get me? So as soon as you kick that, you gotta get there and be ready for the next one. So that means as soon as that ball is won, one of you is presented. Now what I'm looking for is a decent kick. Right? A decent kick. So you're gonna be faced, you've got to look at all these boys shooting at different angles. Okay? But we're going for that, Aaron. You! Good, good. One, go! Let's go! Ah, two, slow. Good, good. That, that's it, good, good. Right, he's there, he's there. Next turn, next turn. Ah, good, brilliant. From there. Go, he's Good. Where is he? He's there, he's there, he's there. Good shot. Brilliant. From there, from there. Ah, lovely. Where are you? Where is he? He's there, he's there. They're good. Now look at him. He's running. He's tired. Perfect. Now show for him. Show for him. Right, where's your last red? There it is there. And over here, you've two left. That's one, two. Now good. This is exactly what we want. Match pressure. Match pressure. Okay, so again, a different a different coach and a probably completely different style. Again, he's very not not too loud, but uh, you know, he's good a good voice projection there, and he's having a bit of crack with the player. So again, it's just a different style. Um, but I suppose in terms of the Taurus principles being applied, so it's testing and challenging, so physically and mentally. So I suppose physically, we said that the players have to shake off their their mark or get rid of them. Okay, mentally in the in the sense that. They have to be automatically just they just have got ridden ridden of a ball and there's another one ready to come from the opposition team. So they have to reverse roll and now they're the defender. So it's 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 quite um, mentally and physically challenging in that sense. Upskill, so positional game sense. Okay, so players, as in the both keepers and the outfield players, get to work on um, their game sense for their particular position. So the backs are marking tightly, the forwards are shaking off their marker, and the keepers are, you know, communicating with their teammates and, you know, in dialogue on how to get the ball and retain possession from the, from the dead ball. And so, again, it's a game-based situation, pretty clear. It's all-inclusive in the, t- in the sense that all players' positions are involved. So you've got forwards, you've got backs, you can have throwing the midfielders, and you've got the keepers, okay? So it's not one of these sessions where the, the keepers go off and do their own thing and... The forwards might do their own thing, a kicking session, the backs might do some defending. So it's all inclusive in that sense. Stimulating, I suppose, there's quick restarts, okay? So you cannot switch off. It's going to be physically demanding. If you switch off, you're going to you're going to lose your marker and your marker's going to get the ball and there's no real hiding place in that game. Okay? Cormac, Cormac just yeah. on that, just, yeah, sorry, just on that as well, that, I, like... You know, you as coaches, if you're thinking that, you know, you're working on your kickouts as well. And I suppose if you go back a couple of years ago, you, we, we probably would have, including myself, would probably set up a goalkeeper, six backs and six forwards and just kick from one goals. But you can see the difference there by 
that activity and adapting the activity. You know, you've got your two goalkeepers working on the outside. You're putting them in a situation all the time to get quick kick outs. You know, if you see any of the top inter-county goalkeepers now, they can kick the ball out within five seconds. So the, you're getting them to practice that all the time. And then you're getting your players then out the pitch to be reacting to that really, really, really quick. So in relation to that, like, you know, adapting your activity is, is huge there. And the way the column... In, in the video as well, the way, and this focus on the how, the way he coached that and kind of challenged the players and his voice tone, you know, you know, would, 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 would add to that activity as well. So, you know, that's a really, really good activity and, and, a, and a good way to adapt something in relation to what you want to work on. Thanks, Paul. So the next one is, it's called 1v1 defend versus attack, okay? So again, You'll see players in a 1v1 situation in a large, a large area, okay? So the quality isn't fantastic for this, but, you, you know, you'll get, the, you'll get the picture by actually watching, um, seeing what's going on. Um, it, it is a really effective activity, and, you know, you can pro progress it and regress it as well, plenty. So we're just going to play that and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so again, something very different, but again, you can see that it's, it, it is Colin Alley again, and the, the vice pro projection is a massive thing with him there. It, it, there's a large volume of players there. They're all being catered for. Um, I suppose a 1v1 is, is a hugely important part of the game because basically if you win your 1v1, you create an overlap, which, which gives a, a numerical advantage. So very important part uh, of the game to work on. So I suppose going through the tourist principles, um, how it's testing. So the match, you can match your players on ability in, in, in that sense, okay? Um, you can also challenge them to score a goal or a point after the line break, all right? Um, it's actually testing also in the, in the fact that it's really physically demanding. So if you just imagine you're solo and along, but you're also getting slight contact off, off another player or a little bit of a pullback and it's it's doubly uh, demanding in a, in a physical kind of uh, way. <clears throat> Upskill so defender one <clears throat> effort okay defender two is working under technique okay attacker one use of steps okay and the se second one he's more kind of focusing on technique okay relevant so where to use in the game or on the pitch or in tactics okay so I suppose um, it's also fundamental to all. OK, um, all inclusive, all players are engaged and challenged. OK, so if you look at that, he's using half a pitch. So if you have the personnel as in on your management team, you could run that. And if you had enough players, you could run that on the opposite end of the pitch as well. All right. 
all active providing opportunity for coaching all right so again you can get feedback off the players on the breaks um it's stimulating numerous opportunities to impress so you know you're in a one-on-one -on -one there and you're obviously going to be changing roles so you can actually really show off your talent in, in a sense that you're really good on the ball and you're actually really good at shadowing a player and dispossessing them possibly Car so again, Sorry, Carmack. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, finally, just the dispossession results in a role change. Okay, so you're rewarded for good tackling. All right. Yeah, okay, Paul. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned there about personnel. And, you know, if you find yourself up there, you know, that's an inter-county training session. If you noticed, there's about four or five coaches along the middle of the pitch. So when they're done that activity, they go up and get feedback. But if you found yourself up there with 20 players and two coaches, you have to really adapt that activity because there's a danger of that activity running with no coaching going on. So if you can imagine yourself with, you know, 20, 20, 20 lads there and two coaches, you can't, you can't possibly watch every single one of them on a 1v1, okay? So you might have to adapt that, adapt that into a 4v4 or a 3v3 tackling squares where you might have coaches then that can look at them squares so or a 5v5 square where you're focusing on the tackle on that. But just be mindful of, you know, as, as Cormac said, what personnel you have with you in relation to do that because that drill is really really good but there's no coaching going to go on in that drill if you've only two coaches and 23 or four players thanks paul um again i suppose yeah and you're linking back into there paul if there's a player trying to break into a team and there's two or two coaches there and he's got no they're not even watching me you know so or you know they're, they're not watching you know us at all so how, how am i getting my opportunity to impress so it's very important that you do have your your team there and they're, and they're observing all the players and everyone's getting an equal kind of opportunity and i suppose i think we can get bogged down as well paul in the part of all inclusiveness so it's it's all well and good that players are involved but um I, I, in all in these activities all the time but if you are including all the players, it's very important that you give, allow the appropriate rest time or else they're just kind of detraining or overtraining. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, cause, you know, you could go and run that activity 60 seconds on and 30, 30 seconds off and, you know, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get anything out of it. You're just going to get sloppy tackling players that are tired and stuff like that. So it's really, really important that, you know, you gauge what time and give them the active recovery then between between each of the activities that you get the best out of it in relation to what you're trying to work with, work on. Yeah, and you see that in a couple of, in, the, in the last yeah. uh, couple of videos as well. So this one's called Turnovers Count, OK? We'll just play it for a short amount of time. And just observe the Turnovers Count. Turnovers Count. Football. Six minutes. Team A begins by attempting to work the ball from the end line as far as the 45 meter line. If they reach the 45 meter line without losing possession of the ball, they immediately turn and attack the goal. Team B must attempt to dispossess them. Okay, right now? Uh, no, it's not the full width. Let's go. It's only here to the sidelines. That's it. It's where the cones are. If Team B causes a turnover at any stage, they immediately become the attacking it's team. Work it out, work it out, work it out, work it out. That's it. Come on, open the right, open the right. Yes, yes, shoot, shoot. Shoot, jump over, shoot. Break the line, break the line. Attack is on, attack is on. Turn over, turn over, turn over. Make a kite. Stick it over, stick it. Okay, yellow's in again, jog in, yellow's in. Let's go, yellow's in. Yellow's in, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait till the yellows are in on the 20 or the 13. Ready? Let's go, attack on. Back door, back door, back door, back door. Come on, switch play, lad. Switch play, switch play, switch play, switch play. Come on, look at the space. And go. Turn over! Take a shot, take a shot. Go, 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 go,
Okay, so I'll just stop that there. And I suppose there's two sides, uh, two things I've noticed from that. Um, probably, and uh, the, the coach, from my point of view, I, I'd say whether it was a good move or a bad move, but the coach said, uh, gave them a piece of information. I was kind of bordering on being a telling coach. So he was right in both cases. So he t told them initially to switch the play, which they did. Okay. Um, again, there at the end, just before, 30 seconds before um, I stopped it, he asked them to shoot. He kind of said he was about to shoot. And he was probably right again because they ended up making four or five passes and they still haven't getting, got the shot off from a worse, and they're in a worse position again with, with more players back. So I suppose it's, it's trying to find a happy medium between being a telling coach. Sometimes you do have to prompt them in the early stages, but f uh, essentially you want your players making decisions for themselves and looking up. Okay. So I'm just going to move on to how the terrorist principles apply to that. Do you have anything on that, Paul? No, no, just just, just what you said as regards the telling. I suppose in that situation, I, if I was coaching, I'd probably watch the activity and I'd ask the player, you know, if he made if he made the wrong mistake, you know, if the, if the, the wrong op took the wrong option, I'd ask him like, what could you have done in that situation the next day? So try and try and get it out of him instead of you know, I'm kind of always mindful of telling all the time because. You know, on a big day, and maybe there's, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people and a lot of external factors. You know, I, you know that the, the players then have to think for themselves, and you know they can't hear your voice. So I, I'd be very mindful of that. Yeah. Okay, so that that game is testing. I suppose it, defenders have to work the ball out and have quickly in in brackets there because the reward for or the the probably the negative of not doing it quickly is. You're pinned in even further, and you're further to wake up, get break up the pitch to um to actually get get the score or retain the ball. So the quicker you do these things, now look, I know it's easier said than done, but you see a lot of um times coaches put a time limit on the time the amount of time the backs have to get the ball outside the forty five. So that's just a way of um you know if you start off with ten seconds, and you could work the way or fifteen seconds and work down, the better you get at it. And the attackers are urge to press high to create a turnover so again in the in the, the, the if you do the the opposite of what we just said the, the the nugget for turning the ball over closer to goal is you have less work to 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 actually score a score from it okay so i suppose it upskills defenders are trying to create space attackers are trying to deny space so if you think about the kind of the role we kind of associate with each 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 position backs are usually to urge to deny space and the attackers are asked to, to, to create space so you're kind of reversing roles in this scenario it's relevant so it's a game-based situation so for example this could happen if the ball if there's a long shot taken and dropped short and, and and the box was crowded or a short kick out and and there's a big press on from the from the forwards so that that scenario happens regularly okay it's all inclusive all engaged and challenged so all the players are playing there and finally, it was stimulating. So it's high intensity, very high intensity. Every player is responsible for another player in that sense. Um, the dispossession res results in a role change. So, um, you know, you don't really want to lose the ball. It's much harder, to, uh, I suppose, to keep the ball. Or, you know, it's easier to, or in a physical sense if you have the ball than it is to try and recover. Okay, here's the final video, okay? This is the, a, a new one we added. And... Um, it's called exploit and execute. Okay, so initially it's a uh, it's 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 a four and four, but uh, the 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 fourth player as a defender is kind of um, a delay. So it's actually a four on three. So I just w watch a little bit of this, and um, I'll stop it stop it once we've seen enough, and we'll have a quick uh, quick chat about. Okay, so you see the the fourth defender has to run out past one of the poles in the forty five. Just think about what the defender should be doing and what the attacker should be doing here.
Okay, so I'll stop it there. So I suppose, ju just have a think there, I hope you've been thinking about maybe what should the backs be doing uh, in, and and the forwards be doing, okay? So we're just going through the tourist principles now and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more. Okay, so it's testing in the sense that the forwards must act quickly, okay? Um, the reason being that the quicker they do it, the more chance to have of scoring, all right? Because there's three defenders. The job of the defenders is to delay and deny space for as long as they can until the support comes, okay? So I suppose um, the, the game, I suppose, is, is um, it's, it's a real scenario-based session, which this, ha this happens an awful lot. And um, a lot of the time, um, you'll see the up upskilling part here now, realise when the goal opportunity has passed and just get, get out with any score, okay? So that's how you're upskilling there. Um, from a defender's point of view, okay, you see mostly there the forwards did take the shot on really early and, and got a few goals off it, okay, so it, the, the fourth defender, it was very difficult for him to get into, into it, but again, if they, if they deny space for long enough and delay them for long enough, that fourth defender will come back and the chances are the ball is really close to goal in a crowd situation and they'll have to only get a point, so that can be real it can be a little bit demoralising for the forwards and it can be a real boost for the backs. If and you, you see them, a lot of them celebrating that. Even if they do concede a point now, they've, they've, they've stopped the goal. So it, it can be a big boost for them, OK? It's relevant in the sense that it's a game-based situation with decisions for both teams on how to deal with the overload. So the forwards are thinking about the extra player, the numerical advantage, and the backs are thinking about will I move forward, will I hold my position so there's lots and lots of different uh, things to think about there in that in that one drill okay, it's all in, it's all inclusive again, okay so again, it was probably just quick turnarounds in that game, it was probably a, uh, from a coaching point of view, we didn't hear a whole lot but we could see it, we could see it working well, okay there was fast rotations based probably on, on that, the weather conditions and I suppose every attack only will last about 20 seconds so there, there, that shouldn't really be an issue there it's stimulating in the sense that um, there's need for fast decision making for backs and forwards. So you have a split second to make that decision or the goal chance is gone. Um, lots of opportunity for generating feedback. So I was kind of chatting uh, earlier on um, with one of the lads about this and we were, we were saying that, you know, sometimes it's good to have those extra lads not involved in the drill. And they can say, you know, the coach might stop it if, if there was a goal or there wasn't a goal. And get a bit of feedback from the guys watching and both the, the players who were on the ball or the backs who were defending. So a player might say, you know, my angle might say, Jesus, why didn't you do this? And then the, the back or the forward might give a, a, an answer and say, look, this is the, these, these scenarios happened within the move. And I suppose you can kind of get a real good bit of chat going on there and it, it can really help the team going forward. Um, anything else in that, Paul? Yeah, Carmen, get, yeah, you've covered it a lot, but like, you know, coaches, I, I don't think we can emphasize enough the importance of, you know, the transition, you know, like when you think of Gaelic football or Horn, like it's constant transition phases when you lose the ball, you know, you know, you, you, and get it back off the other team, you're attacking or, you know, vice versa on that. So like, you know, like any of the sessions I'd be doing now of, of, of loads of that transition, transition, uh, phase of uh, activities in it that you know when we lose the ball that we break out quickly or if we're the defending team that we get back quickly okay on that so you know i think it's important as coach that you you include loads of that in your training sessions okay right so i'm just going to move on now so look we kind of covered all the the the, the tourist principles there and we've kind of given you a lot of um examples and i hope it kind of emphasize the importance of it and you see different ways that that it can and look you're never going to get them all in every every single exercise you do but just keep just keep them in mind and try and implement them into as many um of your of your um activities as possible so look we're just going to go through some of the, the resources now so this is something um we did as Wicklow staff a couple about 18 months ago um we did one for all the academy squads so this is an under 16 um GCA Academy sessions. So these are these can be used for squads as well, or, or sorry, club teams as well. So, and um, basically, it's an example of a setup for a kickout. Now we done we we've done this for forwards as well. This is a defensive setup for a kickout, and there's loads of ideas there. We've one for forwards as well. Okay, 
Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but I have another one here. We've uh, Paul just me uh, mentioned a minute ago, transition play and and uh, the importance. So these are another session based on transition play, okay? So lots of different activities there. And again, we'll put this in the chat box and uh, provide a link to get to these. So these can come in handy for a coach. Like, we'd obviously advise that coaches are prepared and have their sessions ready going down there. But if you want something different or you're in a rush suddenly, even coming home from work and you, you need need something new to freshen things up, these can be really helpful. And, um, you know, there's a wealth of wealth of uh, resources out there. I think I think with the them activities as well, uh, Cormac. Sorry that they, they concentrate on there. If you look in the corner there, attack to defence coaching points. So you know they, they delay a player on the ball, set up in the defence the fish uh, position, win ball back. Okay, so like they're focusing on that when you've lost the ball. So you're giving you them co coaching points that then you can make questions for your players then if they're not doing that. So did we did we delay the player on the ball? Did we set up our defensive position? Did we win the ball back? And, you know, wh when we won the ball back, what did we do? So them, there are questions you can actually add, have ready in your session. Yeah. So basically, there, there's a um, few more resources here that we've shown you. Um, the central one there, all these webinars can be found now on our Wicklow GA Coaching and Games Development um, YouTube channel. So we have lots of stuff there. There's lots of resources there. You see in the... In the, the on the very right there, GCA under 14 activities. We have them for um, different age groups as well. You see the under 16 and 17 one, so that will be applicable here. Um, again, we've got all the webinars we've conducted over the last number of months also. So that's fairly handy. Um, again, more resources. There's lots and lots of resources. On the right, you'll see the, the Taurus Youth Coach resource. So there's a number of sessions there for 16 and 17 year old players, okay? And um, again, there's that goalkeeping activities and the tourist principles are involved there. On the left, you'll see it's just giving us give us a game. It's a it's a book there from Dublin, from Dublin GAA. Um, again, there's there's another one there. I got bought one today. It's called um, what was the name? But now actually I can't find. Oh, here is sorry. Um, creative game sense. Okay, so Dublin GAA have loads and loads of these resources. And again, you can never have enough of them, but. Um, on the on the flip side of that, you know, there, there there is an infinite number of what we should be coaching. I think it's more important, and, and Paul mentioned this at the start of this, how we coach these sessions. You know, you can you can have a bank of of activities, and it's all there, but it's it's no good if you're not you're not coaching in the proper way. Okay, so that's and in fairness, they're all you know the people on here tonight are interested in that and they want to improve. And at the end of the day. Oh, we, 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 whether you're Jim Gavin or just, um, you know, an, an under four, an under, or foundation, or sorry, a nursery coach starting off at the bottom of the ladder, you know, we all want to improve, okay? So that's, that's the most important part. The last resource there I'll just uh, bring your attention to, and you might have heard about it already, the Be Ready to Play uh, initiative. That's been started the last month or so, a few weeks anyway. And um, if you go on to Learn in GA, the website there you'll find more information on that there's three different elements the youth the adult and then the advanced player so I, i'd imagine it's someone with a training age so it's all related to snc and getting ready for being back on the pitch okay so i suppose you don't need to be an snc coach to you know to to offer this to your players okay so that's it's, it's about upskilling the player and the coach okay so they're comfortable doing these things and they're pretty simple and there's lots of resources and videos and uh, other webinars additional webinars to promote this so i'd really advise you just click into that and register and you know it, it's it's there's there's blocks of two weeks and it's updated every two weeks also so it's really good um finally so you've the club visit model that's made up of three steps so you've all come on here tonight to attend the workshop and the webinar so once we're back on the pitch and hopefully it's not too far away um you call your GDA or GPO and they will come out and to your club and assist you in a session, okay? So they're not coming down to take the footballs and the coaches go off and have a chat and a laugh. They're coming down to to coach alongside you, okay? And then the second visit, the, co the, the, the club coach will take the lead. So again, the tourist principles principles will be applied in a kind of debrief after both of these sessions. So again, 
that's how we improve. The debrief is almost the most important part of these sessions, okay? And again, these aren't, you know, some people can be intimidated by these and at the end of the day, it, it can be it can be a little bit awkward sometimes and you feel like someone's um maybe breathing over your shoulder and they're not but at the end of the day i know from from um seeing it seeing them in action the the, the lads are very friendly we're, we all kind of take this approach and um you know at the end of the day we're all here to improve and um i, I really advise you know it's it, it, it's it's really good initiative and i suppose the process is really good as well and again just bear in mind that the the debrief is almost the, the most important part of the whole um session okay so finally um if you've got any questions or anything there um you can feel free to come on the mic or put them in the chat box and myself and paul will do our best to answer them Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Carmack. I've just put that message in the box there. So, um, you know, just like to thank everyone for for uh, coming on the call tonight. Um, I know we went through a lot there, and you know, we'll send out the presentation and all the videos uh, there to you. But you know, I suppose the one message that we were trying to get try to get across tonight was, you know, the how and the what, um, and how you put that into practice. And you know, the tourists program is a really really good initiative and you know as Carmick said contact your your gda or your gpo um you know to, to to run that program um for for the for your team um in your club and you know as i said the the, the coach will come out and you know like have a look at the session and you know i suppose from the ones i've done over the last year and a half or two years you know the the, the big one that keeps coming back to me is the how like you know what i mean how you can improve like with the question and all that kind of stuff because you know most of the sessions that i would have seen like the, the content is really really good but you know the improvements probably can be made on the how and, and and how we can improve by questioning and challenging our players and i suppose that is coaching really like taking up a book and looking at looking at looking at sessions and 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 putting marking them out on a pitch you know is 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 probably not not the most difficult part of it but it's it's like the spotting and the fixing and the question in the players and engaging the players in the in the in the activities and 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 getting them what you, ultimately what you, what you want to do or getting your team um team doing what you want want to do so um 